use Green's theorem to compute the counterclockwise circulation around the boundary of region R and R2. So, let's begin by recalling Green's theorem for circulation. So, you know, from vector line integrals that the circulation of a vector field over a closed curve C is defined as the vector field dotted with a differential d vector r. And Green's theorem tells us that we can compute this with a double integral over this region r of the curl. So we have the partial derivative of g with respect to x minus the partial derivative of f with respect to y dA. So we want to use the double integral here to compute our circulation. So the first thing that we want to do is establish our double integral. So I'm going to sketch our region so we can see our bounds. So we know that R is the region bounded by the curves. Y is equal to cosine of X and Y is equal to zero, the X axis. And then we already have our X bounds here. So here is our Y axis and here is our X axis. And now we know from x that this curve, or the x bounds, are from 0 to pi by 2. We know, of course, that cosine starts at 1. So it has a maximum point at 1, and then has a root here at pi by 2. So this is y is equal to cosine of x. And of course, we know that cosine oscillates infinitely in both directions, but we're only concerned with the bounded region. So keeping these x bounds in mind, we also know that we have this region is bounded by the curve y is equal to 0. And we know that this is moving in a counterclockwise direction. So we'll put a little arrows here to indicate our direction. So our bounded region is within these curves. So this is r. So from here, we can state that the bounds for y, y is greater than or equal to 0, less than or equal to cosine of x. And again, x is given to us. x is greater than or equal to 0, less than or equal to pi by 2. And of course, if you could see those bounds by looking at this given uh, example here by the description, by all means, go right for it. But it's always nice to see what exactly are we doing. So the next thing that we need here is to compute the curl the integrand of our double integral. And we know, of course, that the curl is defined as the partial derivative of g with respect to x minus the partial derivative of f with respect to y. So we were given this vector field in the plane defined as minus 3y, 3x. So we can see the partial derivative of f with respect to y is minus 3. Partial derivative of g with respect to x is positive 3. And so our curl is equal to 3 minus a minus 3, which leaves us with 6. And we have everything we need to compute the circulation around this boundary using Green's theorem. So by the circulation form of Green's theorem, we have the following. We have the double integral over this region R of the curl, which we just computed, dA. So the outer bounds are x, so that's from 0 to pi over 2. The inner bounds are y, so that's 0 to cosine of x. Integrand, or the curl, is 6 here. And our bounds, or order of integration, is dy dx. And we're ready to go. So I'm keeping the x bounds on the outside. So integrating, we have 6y evaluated from 0 to cosine of x dx. And so we have the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of 6. This will be multiplied. So here we could actually, we'll put, for safety, we'll put 6 on the outside. And that's a cosine of x minus 0 dx which leaves us with a cute single integral, 
6 times the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of cosine of x dx. So this is a general antiderivative. We're left with 6 times sine of x, which we're ready to evaluate from 0 to pi over 2. So we have 6 multiplied by sine of pi by 2 leaves us with 1 minus sine of 0 is 0. For a beautiful final answer for our circulation, 6.